Hey everyone, this is David Brown, and today is March 1st, 2025, which means it's the first day of the Derby Hill Hawk Watch. And not only the first day, but my first day ever as the counter here. The photo here is from yesterday when I first arrived to the Derby Hill Bird Observatory, which is run by Onondaga Audubon Society and located in Mexico, New York. This will be my home for the next three months as I seek to tally as many raptors and other birds as possible. When I woke up this morning, it was still raining, but by the time I finished my breakfast, it had cleared, and my first thing on the agenda today was to get some lake watching in. It's a style of birding I really enjoy, but I don't get to do it enough, so I wanted to get out and scan the birds on Lake Ontario before having to do the hawk watch. And I'll just show a few highlights. Here we have a flock of scop, and it looks like they're probably all greater scop. This one here is probably the best example of the wing pattern you're looking for for greater, where this brighter white is not only here on the secondaries, but also extends out onto the primaries. On a lesser scop, the brighter white would normally only be on the secondaries and would stop about here. Now, if you look, there's one bird that is not a scop in this photo, and that's the bird in the bottom left, which is a female canvasback. There were some long-tailed ducks, common mergansers. There were quite a few common golden eye. Here's a ring-billed gall, and you can see how big the waves were getting today with the strong winds. And here's a red-breasted merganser. There are feeders set up, and I'll show you some highlights of birds you might see this time of year, but look how much snow is on the ground. There's really a couple feet of snow in some places, so it's going to be a while until all that snow melts. Here's a black-capped chickadee, which is a nice change from all of the Carolina chickadees I've been seeing down in Delaware the past couple months. Here's two tufted tip mice that were acting a bit goofy. Here's a pair of downy woodpeckers. Note the small size and small bills. We notice that the top bird has red on the back of the head, which indicates it's a male. The bottom bird's a female. Here's another woodpecker that looks very similar, but is larger in size and has a much larger bill. This is a hairy woodpecker. And again, the red on the head indicates that it's a male. Here's the view from the parking lot of the North Lookout looking in a westerly direction. And you can see there's signs with letters and numbers to help call out the positions of different birds. Today, the weather was overcast with temperatures starting around freezing and then going down throughout the day. The winds were strong to very strong out of the west and eventually shifted more northwesterly in the afternoon with occasional snow squalls. With those somewhat unfavorable conditions on the first day of the season, I wasn't sure what to expect in terms of raptors, but I was very happy to see this coming at me. This is an adult bald eagle, and it was the first migrating raptor of the season. And it ended up coming pretty much right overhead and giving a really nice look. And that's one thing I'm excited about being here at Derby. The birds tend to be lower and closer than they were at Braddock. This bird was the second migrant of the day and it never came close. So I won't make you guess from the photo what it is, but it's an adult red-tailed hawk. The only other raptors I saw today were a few more bald eagles that were not going in the right direction to be counted as migrants, including this nice juvenile. And those snow squalls ended up shutting the count down at 11 o'clock. I did go back out later to do a little bit more lake watching. Here we have one of three gall species we saw today. This is a ring-billed gall. And if we go up in size, here we have an immature American herring gall. And look how dirty they look overall underneath. And if we go up in size again, compare that to this great black-backed gall. This is a first winter bird. And notice the contrast between the dark underwing and the white of the body and head on the great black-backed gall. And I'm going to flip back to the herring gall. Notice there's hardly any contrast. Just it's really brown and dirty looking, even the head compared to the great black-backed, which has a really clean white head and white underside to the body. Also notice the bill. The great black-backed gall here has a really thick bill. If we go back to that herring gall, a bit of a thinner, more normal looking bill. And I also had this adult great black-backed gall. Even with the lake being so rough, I was able to spot this tiny horned grebe. And it's a species I don't get to see fly very often, so I always enjoy when I see them fly. 
Here we have a group of large dark sea ducks with white secondaries. These are white-winged scoters. And out of the three scoter species, down in Delaware, white-winged scoter is the least common to see, but up here along Lake Ontario, it's actually the most common to see. Here's a duck with a white body and white topside to the wings, with a dark red head and a very sloping forehead. This is a male canvas back. With the wind shifting and having more of a northerly component, I decided to check out the south lookout, especially since I'll probably be counting from there tomorrow. And this is what it looks like. This is the area that you observe from. And you can see to get from the road up there, you have to climb over a couple feet of snow. And I'm sure uh, the whole walk over there is probably a couple feet of snow. So I don't think I'll be walking over there anytime soon, but um, I'll probably be there watching from my car tomorrow if I had to guess. The parking lot there isn't plowed, but there's a little bit plowed at the entrance that there's enough room for a couple cars. So there's at least enough for me and maybe one or two other cars. Um, anyone else that showed up would have to park along the road, but it's not looking too good tomorrow anyway, so I don't expect a big crowd. And besides some ring-billed gulls and one crow, the only bird I saw while I was there was this adult bald eagle, probably one of the local ones just wandering around, not migrating. And here's the road driving back up the hill to the north lookout, and you can see it's quite icy, so I'm definitely going to be very careful tomorrow morning trying to drive down that. Taking a look at the eBird checklist from today, I had 35 species, plus a couple more I added in the afternoon that I had missed on the main list. And one thing I forgot to mention was I also had two tundra swans fly over, and we'll see plenty of those over the next few weeks, I'm sure, but I was happy to get them on the first day of the count. And looking at the hawk count report for the migrant raptor totals, today we had one bald eagle and one red-tailed hawk for a total of two migrating raptors. And taking a look at the forecast, I already talked about tomorrow a little bit. It's going to be very cold in the morning, probably around 7 degrees Fahrenheit at the start of the count and a high of only 18. Winds are going to be west-northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so... I would expect the count to be done from the south lookout, and I would expect there probably won't be much migration, especially so early in the season. But after that, for Monday and Tuesday, we're looking at light southerly winds, so we should begin to see some signs of migration. All right, well, I'm settled in and really enjoyed my first day here at Derby Hill, and there will be a lot of fun days to come over the next three months. I hope you're able to come out and join us, or if not, at least follow along virtually. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.